This is Vicki Ross, and I thought that I would continue to play with the lily since I like that so well. And my well-used source photo. <clears throat> but what I decided to do was do this one in gouache, just for fun. That's sometimes what I do to get really familiar with stuff. And the other reason is because you saw me put three coats of watercolor to get this flat look. And it's still a little bit streaky, but I decided to leave it alone because sometimes you can make it worse by continuing to work with it. And that has to stay out of the water, or the risk of water. Might just fit it. Let's just do that. Now then, save the bigger one for something else. So we can have it now to look at, or I can. This is Cotty paper. Let me see if I've got a name on the... And I do A3 size Cotty K-H-A-D-I. It's handmade paper from South India. It's made from 100% uh, recycled cotton rag, gelatin sized and acid free. So I thought we I thought that I would think on this. Sorry for the rest of them. Things fit very tight in here. I'm not going to paint the whole sheet, so I folded it in half. And then I proceeded to wet down that fold line. So I want the paper good and saturated. And I needed fresh water. Can you tell? <laughs> Don't do that. Don't do what I do. So this will forever be the backside. And it's going to take some some work. Trying to get paint, get water down into those. And since this is man, um, handmade, it's not going to be as perfectly square. So don't worry about that. This can be, when you're working on your own at home, this can be part of your Zen Zone moment. I don't want to crease it too much because what I'm going to do is tear this with a deckle edge ruler. So let's see if that works. I put this in my master list. This one's from Plaid and I've had it so long it's not even being offered now. So I'm kind of going to put this there, yeah, I think maybe. Halfway on the line. Perfect. Because the deckle edge, you know, just let me pick one. Pick one. It's this one. The deckle edge is prized. And I'm going to tr try to emulate the natural deckel. And that is made when they put the paper pulp 
in the form and these are the edges of where the pulp runs out where machine made paper might have a deckled edge but it's not going to be this nice a deckled edge I thought y'all might like to see that. Okay, now then. Similar. Um, the reason that I do that is because I like to frame, I like to frame a lot of things this way, but if this was a finished painting, like this one, I would mount with archival stuff, I would mount a piece of foam core on the back of this. I don't have one handy, I don't think. Okay. Wait, what's that? Yeah, here's a piece of foam core. And I'd either use black or I would paint this black. But a piece that comes in about a half inch to three quarter inch from the edge all the way around. And then I would glue this to the watercolor. So you've made a backing, but the edges are free. And then I take... And my favorite, the only one I've been able to find ever, is at Hobby Lobby, and it's a shadow box frame. And I take that frame and take the back off of it, and I either paint. Sometimes they come with a black background in the frame. But anyway, I want black. So I want a flat black back there. So it, however you get it, flat black. And then I take this, and I have my... Why did I put it up? I have my mat board or my foam core back here and I attach it to the surface of the back of the frame and then pop it in the frame and you're ready to go. Now the thing that I like about the floaty is that whoops I can't use that one. I just got a hole at the bottom. The thing I like about it is that humidity makes the paper, the paper reacts to the humidity in the air. Okay, that's better. I've got some real ones. real bags. Okay, so this floats smooth, smooth, x -lax. Okay, um, this floats and the corners kind of curl and move and they don't move much because there's only a half inch. The other thing is you get a shadow effect as you walk past the piece in the room, the shadow moves depending on where the, the light in the room is coming from. That is my favorite framing method. Again, the caveat here, do as I do, not as I say. I mean, do as I say, not as I say. <laughs> All right. Now, this is protected from any little water stains that might happen 
in this room. So, I'm going to do the same thing over again. And I'm going to do the same composition. Or do I want to use the one that I did in the class? Nope, I want to do this one. I think this one's just short of perfect. <coughs> I could go just a little bit bigger. Because my paper is a little bit bigger. Planted it as I go. This is this is the this is what you do. Um I'm hanging loose. I'll be right there. Well, you know, let me see if I've got the one that I did that was bigger. This one's backwards, but that's okay. I mean, it's flipped horizontally. That will work. Make sure your fingers are dry when you're doing this because the inkjet print will fade if you've got any. It's ink. What I'm doing is folding this down to the edge of the design. Okay. All right, so I'm going to put it or put it right there. And I'm going to mark the upper boundaries of the flower. And that one's about right here. And the stem is here and here. So from that point to there, on that angle is right here. Now double check. I'm measuring from there to there. <coughs> I don't know who does this or who doesn't, but for the time being it works for me. I'm headed here It's a flower, so you don't have to be perfect. The bottom of my flower is here. So I'm going to come in here. And this is that far from my edge. So about right here. So I can I can come out and just join that in a pleasing curve. Now it's a little bit deeper curve than that. Okay, now come around. This one ends about right here. And 
And this is just a swoop down like that, something organic. And then we come here and we stop. About right in here. So it does not matter what you Forgive me while I get quiet. And if you don't feel comfortable with this, copy the dang thing, okay? And there we are with that one. And we've got a little bit of a curve where the flower tilts. Wait a minute. No, we don't. This comes, gee, Manetney, I can hardly see it. And then this. think it really matters. It does to me, so we're going to do it. Okay, so that is here. So I know it's boring because you can't see what I'm doing. So that's where the flowers actually, you know what, we'll worry about that when we get there. How about that? And I need to bring this on out a little bit. I'll hold this up where y'all can see it in a minute. And I've got to decide. Okay. I got it. This goes all the way up to here. And then this is on the back side of the flower. So I got it. That can come about like that. So we're still looking underneath the flower. Okay. Now let's refine a few things. Be very careful with your paper. Just very light erasing because you can mess up the sizing of your paper and then you're not going to be very happy. Now then, I think you might be able to see that with all the light. All right, now we're going to do the same thing over here. <clears throat> See, we've got... I didn't mark the... I know how to draw, but I choose not to sometimes. So this is... That like that down from here.
one of these days I will do for you a contour drawing. Watch the overlap there so we know that this one is going to come about like that. And come up here and hit that mark. Come down for that little, and then down a little bit and back up. up and meets this and then there's a shadow right there and then the bottom of our flower <laughs> <It's a> eraser <laughs> about right here now if you can keep up with your marks without much trouble Pretty darn close. And pretty darn close. This is a real hard pencil. So I can barely see the lines. Okay, pencil away, eraser away. Get my gouache plate out. And I'm going to spray it. And then I'm going to use the Lucas. Let me see what I've got here. Two yellows, two reds. That's a cad red. Magenta. Okay, warm and cool. Then we've got warm and cool yellows and warm and cool blues, so we're good. We are good. I prefer to work with wet 
um, fresh gouache and watercolor. And particularly gouache because the the cheaper brands that come in a pan that I love, like the ones by Hemi, um, they crack real easy, and I don't I don't need that aggravation when I'm painting. Wait. And of course, if you plan ahead, you would do this already. Gouache is opaque watercolor. And from a chemical perspective, well, that just may stay there. Doesn't matter, it's in our color family. From a color perspective, I mean, from a chemical perspective, what is done is that move this paper before I get happy. Um, what is done is that they grind your artist quality paints they have these cute little seals on here I think I just poked them before. Whoa! And that popped right out. So here's my my blue red. And remember, I've told you guys before, I work comfortably in a split complementary palette. And that means warm, cool red, warm, cool yellow, warm, cool blue, and white. And with those colors in white, I can mix almost anything I want. The only thing I've got to say about this, it was a promotional set, and the tubes are not totally full. So that would be my cad yellow-ish. Pop the hole first. You'll have better luck getting it out. That's cad yellow light, which is closer to lemon than it is to cad yellow medium. And this is yellow ochre. Well, my other ones are right behind me. I can get them if I need it. This would be cyan, I betcha. Yep. Anyway, I got this as a promo set from Jerry's. And I think I only paid $10. And the quality is really good. It's 
So there's that. And there's that little chunk of white. And it doesn't hurt gouache to dry and then be wet, re-wet. It depends on what you're doing, as always. And I'm just going to push that over to the side. Right there, right in front of me. I do want some different yellow gamboge will work. I guess that's not going to come out fresh. I'll dig that. I'll open that tube and what I'm going to do. I'm going to just do that right now so y'all can see it. Some of these paints were given to me by a friend who was breaking up household. I'm just going to put a little water down in here and come back to it. Well, come on now. Play with me. Be nice. I wouldn't be obsessing over the yellow so much if the picture wasn't about yellow. Nipples. I'm thinking that may be the one I was just about out of. That's watercolor. Doesn't matter. Naples. I think I just picked that one up. All right. That's my point. I think I need to buy some more. Some of these are a little bit dried out. Squeeze out just a little bit of that Naples. Naples yellow is a mix that has white in it. Alright. Alright. Set right. In oil and gouache and casein, buy the bigger white because those are the ones you go through the most. Y'all ready? <laughs> 